welcome to the Open to Hope show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my co-host and daughter, Dr. Heidi Horsley. This show is brought to you by the Open to Hope Foundation in partnership with the Compassionate Friends that Heidi and I are involved with. Heidi's on the board, yep. and we want to tell you all about it. It's an organization to help people who've lost children, grandchildren, and siblings, and it's a wonderful organization, and we have got a great group of people today here to tell you all about the organization. You want to introduce them, Heidi? Yes, I'd love to. So we are talking today with Babe Anthony Miro and his wife, Michelle, and Arnie and Varda Wendorf. And let's see, what do I want to tell you about them? They are from Staten Island, and Michelle and Varda run a Compassionate Friends Staten Island group together. Um, they are some of my very favorite people. They have a very strong chapter. They're extremely involved and they all do it in honor and in tribute of their daughters. Let's get started now, and uh, should we start out with you, Varda? Sure. Tell us a little bit about your experience and journey. Well, uh, my daughter Lauren died on uh, June 29th, 1998. Um, she was 24 years old, and she died in a car crash. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when this happened to us, um, I, we didn't know what to do. We were at a loss, mm -hmm. but I knew that there was no way that I could do it myself. Um, our whole world shattered and we looked at each other and we just didn't know what to do. I lost my daughter Lori uh, almost 17 years ago, just short of 17 years. She was 10 days short of her 19th birthday. She was also in a car accident. And um, I, unlike Varda, never, I didn't know where to go. Mm -hmm. I never thought of joining a group. Groups were something that I would never think of joining. And luckily, my husband did think of it, uh, and um, it's, it's really a lifeline. So let's get to your husband there now that you pointed to him. So babe, uh, you, it was your stepdaughter, right? Yeah, my stepdaughter, Lori, and uh, when this happened, I was, I was worried that she was gonna lose her mind. That's what mm -hmm. was going through my mind. Mm -hmm. So I says, I have to find something for her, and uh, somebody I knew, we were new in Staten Island, I met this lady, Flo, out of nowhere. Today, I, know, I think we were put together for a reason, you know. And mm -hmm. she had, she gave me a contact number for uh, the group in Staten Island. Yeah. How about you, Arnie? What's your? Well, Varda was looking up compassionate friends on a computer, and we found one. We live in New Jersey, mm -hmm. in Bayonne, which is right across from Staten Island. Mm -hmm. But we found there was one in Bayonne, but we were told that they don't have meetings during the summer. This was in June. So we started going to one in Parsippany, which is about 40 minutes away. And then somebody I worked with knew somebody in Staten Island, mm -hmm. had a friend that went to the Staten Island chapter. So we figured, you know, let's try that one out. And that was 17 years ago, and wow. we've been going there ever since. Mm -hmm. wow. And I wasn't going back to a meeting. <laughs> after wow. the first one. So after the but first one, you, just, you didn't think you were going to go back? I, I was just taking her, and once she knew her way, then I wasn't go, going, but I have rarely miss a meeting. What do you think that bereaved parents and uh, grandparents and siblings, what do you think they need most? Mm -hmm. you I think what they need most is to know that they're not alone. Mm -hmm. and, and the motto of the Compassionate Friends is we need not walk alone, and that is the truth. Because when this happens to you, you think you're the only one in the world who could to whom it has happened. So just to know that someone else actually understands, mm -hmm. usually when people say, I understand what you feel, and they really don't unless they've lost a child or a grandchild mm -hmm. or a sibling. When we have this loss, we think we're going crazy. Yeah. And the things that we think about are a little <laughs> crazy. But when you come to a meeting, you find out all of us think the same way. And it's okay. We're not going to you know, you feel like you're going over this mountain and you're going to fall over. And so we all th um, think these things. Most of the men in, in our group, when we started off, we had a handful. Now we get, there's a lot more coming just because they see other guys there. Yeah. And some of them are um, boisterous. You know, they, they say they give out their opinions, but a lot of them don't say anything. So when we get him into a men's meeting, I think I get everyone to say something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I pick out a topic and uh, we roll with it. What, what would be a topic that you'd pick out often? We've talked about 
you know, your your relationship with your wife, mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, your your relationship between your, you and your child. <laughs> well, well, when this happened to me personally, I was very angry. Mm -hmm. talk, a, talk about that. I had a God thing. I, I was mad. I had, I felt I was a little spiritual before this happened, and uh, I have a friend of mine who's a Monsignor. He gave me a book that it's okay to be mad at God, because mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine that he could do this to her, you know, like, not to me, to her, you know, mm -hmm. take a daughter, like, Mm -hmm. And uh, I got over that. I, I've learned to, somebody told me not to shut the door. That same lady, Flo, who introduced me to the group, mm -hmm. keep your foot in there, she told me, don't shut the door. And over the years, it's gotten better, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot mm -hmm. of people come in, they're angry. Everybody's angry when mm -hmm. they come in. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, that's, that's helpful to know. That anger is a normal part of most a lot of people's grief experience. Mm -hmm. And well, the thing that uh, impresses me about your organ, you know, your Staten Island Compassionate Friends is number one, the amount of people that go. You guys have created such a large, tight knit group. And the other piece is the amount of men that are there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you have such a great balance. Mm -hmm. great, it's great amazing. Group. So I'm wondering for people out there that want their husbands to go, how mm. do you get them there? I know, Arnie, you said you went because you were taking Varda. Well, right? most, uh, we, that was one of the topics, and mm -hmm. most of the men went to support their wives. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, you know, they came once, twice, and they didn't come back for various reasons. But a lot of them have stayed. Mm -hmm. You know, in the beginning, we had maybe four or five that would hang out all the time. But now uh, I think we have 10, 15, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we have, you know, 20 to 40 people come. Right. You know, I, th I think it's interesting. I, one thing I really like about the Compassionate Friends is just something you said. Somebody could maybe only come a couple of times, mm -hmm. but maybe they'll come to a candle lighting. Right. Maybe they only come once a year. I know somebody who comes every 10 years, you know, came mm -hmm. after 10 years mm -hmm. because uh, they wanted to uh, celebrate, you know, the mm -hmm. and memory of their child during the candle lighting, which is in the second week of uh, December. The second Sunday of December every year, but also the National Conference. Mm -hmm. Some people only come to that. July 10th to 12th, and let's see, it's going to be in uh, Dallas, Texas. You guys probably already know, because yes. I know that they said you guys book immediately after the conferences and, yes. you know, get your hotel rooms. Yeah, and people, so. you can go on CompassionateFriends.org and find out all about the conference in July. But uh, let's talk a little bit about the Compassionate Friends and why would people want to go to the conference. Mm -hmm. Babe, why do you go? You're always there and a great person. I love there to it. Greet I love meet. the workshops. Uh, I've met a lot of people over the years going there, and it, it's like friends that you see once a year, but mm -hmm. it's like they're really close friends. It's weird, you know. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see them when you get there, you know. It's just What's your favorite workshop? Mine. <laughs> <laughs> you, you do a workshop for stepfathers, step right? Step parents, I different situations. Uh, I like the men's meeting, you know. I like, I like, uh, I've even gone to a, uh, yeah. Writing uh, workshops, yeah. From Guinea's Gentry. Like Babe said, there's also a lot of hope that you get from going to these national conferences. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes people after a loss, we don't think that we're going to survive. Mm -hmm. And to see people that are further down the road, like everybody here, mm -hmm. it, you need that lifeline early mm -hmm. on. You really do. And when we walk, every year when I walk into the national conference, I walk into the hotel, the Staten Island chapter is sitting in the lobby, <laughs> greeting <laughs> everybody. <laughs> it is like a family reunion. It, it is, is amazing. A reunion. And I think it can be really jarring for people that are newly mm -hmm. bereaved, but mm -hmm. then later you see them the next year, and they're part. You know, they're embracing everybody. Mm -hmm. Tell us, um, what if I, I I love what we're hearing, but uh, I find out I don't have a chapter in my neighborhood or in my vicinity? Um, can I start one? Well, I think the first thing would be is uh, to, to contact the national. Mm -hmm. yes. Anyone can do it, I think, anywhere, as long as you have a willing person. I think you have to be 18 months mm -hmm. bereaved or Yeah, 18 like months that. bereaved, right. great, and, uh, and yeah. 18 months bereaved. Does it cost money? No, it doesn't cost anything. Uh, it's a nonprofit organization, actually, um, uh, so you don't need to, uh, you need to get a place. So usually churches would give you some, a place yeah, for hospital. free. Our hospital in Staten Island does give us Mm -hmm. uh, the place with uh, going into the Rotary Club, I think in Redwood City. Yeah, right. or the chapter leader training that's given. Right, right. So well, uh, uh, yeah, uh, so they, they actually take you step by step, and they teach mm -hmm. you how to do it, how to deal with uh, with a group. It's not easy to deal with a group, especially of bereaved parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, you know, we have uh, certain rules and things that we do, um, and so. Why do you guys think? Because I've been to your chapter, and it's just it's just such a family feeling. 
why do you think you're so successful in what you're doing? Like, what do you think of I know, is I, the key? I, think, okay. I know what it is. I think, I think it's that we kind of pick out the, the talent of each person. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for example, Michelle is great at calling people. And that is crucial when mm -hmm. you call people and make that, that personal connection. It's really one of the reasons we're so successful. Mm -hmm. So calling you know, people to reach out? To reach out. Tell them you're there? Absolutely. So. Well, after the first time they come, okay. if you don't call them again, th they're lost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or if we haven't seen somebody a right. long time, right. I'll okay. just go through the list. Oh, wow, we haven't seen. Right. Like he just mentioned Brian. Right. We haven't seen him in a long right. time. So mm -hmm. I, I can't wait to go home and call <laughs> him. <laughs> Are you okay? Uh, I like yeah. that you touch base because I've also heard people say, look, you need to really go to a Compassionate Friends um, meeting three times mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because the first time you might go and feel overwhelmed and say I'm not going back exactly but you need to give it three times before you make that decision mm -hmm. what so helped our group I think a lot right. too we don't talk about it much is uh, <coughs> we these when they took over the group we got in touch with all the funeral parlors right. we got the uh, Staten Island events mm -hmm. to come to some of our That's events mm -hmm. advertising our group mm -hmm. you know so when people on Staten Island lose a child they know the name already right. compassionate friends right. You could be quiet when you want to be quiet. You could talk when you want to talk. And then it spreads it out. And it's, as you said, there's people there 20 years that are giving back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the thing that's, that's interesting about grief, and you guys all know this, is that we can be going along really, really well, and then there can be some major anniversary mm -hmm. dates, mm -hmm. and it can just knock us down. So sometimes we might need a meeting. Mm -hmm. We might not have gone for a while, but then all of a sudden we're like, whoa, where did this come from? Mm -hmm. I'm so overwhelmed mm -hmm. by not having my brother mm -hmm. at my wedding, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that I need to go to a meeting. So, and, and like you said, the door is always open. These meetings are open. People can come or not right. whenever they need us. National yeah. website. The National has a link to us, mm -hmm. has a link to every neighborhood in mm -hmm. the United States, really. Mm -hmm. no, I think, how many chapters are there now? How do you're on the board? 660, is it? So, yeah, something it's like about that. 660. Yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So Not I happens. wanted to ask everybody uh, before the show ends, what piece of advice would you have for a bereaved person? I would recommend you try to find the Compassion of Friends meeting in your neighborhood or wherever you could go, if, you know, it helped us so much. And it's, uh, for me, I like to call Compassion of Friends a, a bridge back to some kind of sanity, you know. Mm -hmm. It's never going to be the same, but it'll help you get on your feet again and live with this. He said it all. <laughs> you have to go to Compassion of Friends meeting and keep going mm -hmm. because at the beginning you don't even realize that you're not even really awake. You just go, just automatic, you're on automatic. Or, or to meet new people in your situation and you feel more comfortable with them than the people on, that you know that haven't lost children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say the same as everyone else, just keep on coming. And if you can't come, call. Get a phone number, go on the website and just call and, and talk to someone. Keep talking because you can't hold this in. You have to you have to talk about it, and that really is very helpful. Wow. It's free therapy. <laughs> I love it's it. Free therapy. And I just yeah. want to give a plug to the sibling program, mm -hmm. which I know that Keith is very involved with, mm -hmm. Michelle and Babe's son. Um, for those of you that have kids out there, please bring them. Mm -hmm. It's a, it, We have a wonderful sibling program for them, and if you've lost hope, please lean on ours and everybody's, everybody here. The uh, I can't say enough that the conference is very healing, and you'll come away feeling a little bit of hope. Can I, can I say one more thing yes. about the conference? For me, it's, it's my vacation with Lauren. Because it, it's, it's one time of a, ye a year that I can devote the entire time to Lauren, to Lauren and me, the two of us. Yeah, I love that. That's the way I look at it. That's wonderful. Well, I believe that we grieve in community, and I want to say you guys are fabulous. There mm -hmm. should be a big warning sign that says, <laughs> hazard grieving alone is dangerous to your health. Absolutely. And I thank you so much for being on the show today, and thanks everybody for watching this show. And Heidi and I always want to say, if you've lost hope, lean on ours until you find your own, and God bless.